Kevin's here to tell us about the, the okay. Search Engine video game. Awesome. Hello. Good afternoon, Kansas Cast. I would like to start by having you watch a one-minute movie trailer. Get ready for the thrill of your life. Now, Universal plunges you into a mystery at the speed of sound. Roller coaster. presentation is called the first Laserdisc video game. What was the first Laserdisc video game? Uh, it might have been Dragon's Lair. Maybe that's the first one you heard of, but no, it was not. Um, because Astron Belt came out the year before. Astron Belt um, was shown at the uh, Music and Music Operators Association show in 1982. Um, and you can get into, you start researching this stuff and you will find people on the internet arguing about, well, you know, technically it wasn't released until 1983, but it was shown at this uh, show in 1982. However, there was a different show in 1982 <laughs> where earlier, you know, two months earlier when they released Quarter Horse, Quarter Horse was uh, probably, I believe, the first arcade game that included a laser disc. I'm going to take a tangent to tell you something interesting about Quarter Horse. It has nothing to do with any of the rest of the talk. Uh, talk it, talk, talk. Uh, Quarter Horse. Uh, had a laser disc in there that could show 60 minutes of video. So there were 60 one minute races, uh, horse races, that you could watch in the game. You would bet, uh, not real money, you would bet on, on who, which, who you thought would win, you'd watch the race, and then you know, you'd, you'd see what happened and you'd win or not. Uh, they used stereo to have the, a left track and a right track that had different announcers with different names for the horses and stuff. So it seemed like there was 120 different races on the disc. Kind of cool. Uh, but the first version came out, like I said, in 82. Yeah, um, versions of that game remained in production with Laserdisc till 2012. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and last I heard, uh, that article said then they switched to sol solid state versions and it is, might still be being made. Anyway, so that's Quarter Horse. Kind of interesting, nothing to do with what I want to tell you about. What I do want to tell you about is about Adventures in Video Land, which is the first Laserdisc video game, which was uh, published as a type-in basic listing for the Apple II in Creative Computing Magazine, the January 1982 issue. It arrived in people's mailboxes late in 1981, putting it well before the 19, early in 1982 date of Quarter Horse. Apple II wins. Yay. 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 Uh, this game was written by David Lubar, who is, uh, he was a, a staff editor at Creative Computing Magazine. And uh, he has an interesting story if you read the article. Basically, uh, David All said, I want you to write a laser disc based video game and David has a story about how he was just like uh, no I don't want to do that how long do I have David's just like two weeks and David's just like hell no you know it's a very interesting story and then of course he ends up at David's house uh, hooked up to the AV system coding this game here's the cover of that issue it also appeared later a couple years later it was reprinted uh, in Big Computer Games, which was a compilation of, of games from Creative Computing Magazine. So the official name of this game was Adventures in Video Land, and I call it Roller Coaster, because that makes more sense, and what it was was a type-in 
uh, basic, simple two-word text adventure game uh, that used the first side of the first disc of the roller coaster laser disc. The roller coaster la laser disc. Um, here, here's the cover of it. There's one of the actual discs. It was on five sides on three discs because this format that they chose to use uh, or that was available to them at the time could hold 30 minutes per side. And you didn't want, to, it's not that it's a two and a half hour movie, but you don't want to cut a scene off in the middle, so sometimes they have to move stuff in excess. So uh, it's a lot of getting up and, and flipping and, and pee breaks, I think, when you were using laser discs. Um, tangent number two, let's talk about roller coaster a little bit. It came out in 1977. It starred George Seagal, Seagal, who I've heard of, and Timothy Bottoms, who I hadn't heard of, but uh, Carrington had. He was very e excited about that. And uh, it was Helen Hunt's first movie. Uh, it came on the heels of a bunch of uh, disaster films, uh, Earthquake and Airport and Towering Inferno and things like that, which was kind of the, the, what people were into at the time. And then a few weeks later, a little movie called Star Wars came out and changed the direction uh, that moviegoers were interested in forever. So this movie didn't do horribly, but uh, it, it did okay at the time. Uh, its timing maybe could have been better. It was uh, released in Sense Around, which uh, basically meant that you go see it in the theater and they'd have two or three big old subwoofers that were keyed to a special track on, uh, on the audio track and it would you know, rumble as the, as, the, uh, as the bomb went off or as the roller coaster went by and that sort of thing. Roller coaster. Now, to connect it to the Apple II, um, it used a uh, uh, Aurora, later called Aurora, OmniScan LaserDisc interface which was a card that was plugged into your Apple II that then plugged into your LaserDisc player and allowed the Apple II to control the LaserDisc. Um, LaserDisc players at that time uh, didn't have serial control. So this thing actually plugged into uh, uh, to the LaserDisc player through the wired remote control port. And it would basically emulate a remote control. If you wanted to jump to a certain frame or pause or whatever, it would just sit, you know, the lasers player thought it was uh, uh, talking to a, remote, a wired remote. And it originally cost $275. Later, I found it dropped to $250. Here's an ad for it. <coughs> Only worked with the uh, Pioneer VP1000 LaserDisc, which is a beautiful machine. Look at that baby. Look at that baby. Mm. Oh, you just want to press those buttons. Isn't that beautiful? Man, it's a good looking machine. But, uh, oh, uh, there was a, a bunch of other, uh, uh, many other LaserDisc interfaces available. I mean, this is, here I have a list of, what, maybe 20 different LaserDisc interfaces, and uh, a lot of them work with the Apple, a few work with the Atari, you can get them work with CPM and I IBM and, and other, many other systems. Um, so there were a lot of them. It was a thing for a minute. Um, so like I said, it was a, uh, you could hook it up um, via the remote control port, um, which is probably became later not the most efficient way to do it. I uh, asked David Lubar, who's on Twitter, and is a nice gentleman, uh, is this the first game? Is my whole premise of this talk wrong? And he said, I've seen the game credited as the first LaserDisc video game. I appreciate that. I'm not really sure I can take much credit other than carrying out a coding task that was handed to me by my boss. <laughs> um, Dragon's Lair feels more like an actual LaserDisc base game, the roller coaster project was really more of a proof of concept. I think the term one of the articles I found used uh, was the use of LaserDisc cutscenes, which is closer to what he made. Either way, it's kind of cool to be a tiny part of one branch of gaming history. On the other hand, I'm nearly 100% certain I was the first person to put Macaulay Culkin in a video game, <laughs> which was Home Alone for the Game Boy. So, a video disc primer. Two main kinds of, uh, sorry, three main kinds of, of video discs. First, we'll talk about capacitance electronic disc, uh, CED, which was RCA standard. Here's what you need to know about it. It was a record album for video. It was literally a vinyl disc with a needle that scratched on the disc and played video on your screen. Um, and uh, 
it was, so it was not a laser disc, but it was a video disc, and uh, had a, a constant angular velocity of 450 RPM or 375 for PAL, and uh, each rotation contained eight interlaced fields, that's four full frames of video, and because of that, you couldn't do freeze frame, you couldn't do slow-mo or anything, because uh, what you want to do for that is to just hang out on, a, on one track and just be there, and it couldn't really do that with four frames per track. CAV, number two, con uh, constant angular velocity. This is called standard play. All disco vision uh, discs are standard play. They always run at 1800 RPM. One rotation takes 1 30th of a second. There's one frame per track, which is important for us soon. Um, each side contains 54,000 tracks, so 54,000 frames works out, I think, to exactly half an hour of video. Please don't at me about that. Um, and uh, there's individually numbered addressable tracks, so you can you know, search to a specific track and start playing from there. Uh, packing density is more tighter on center tracks because they're smaller. Um, and uh, uh, there's freeze frame and slow-mo and jump to frame number. Now later on, having a movie take up three discs was expensive and uh, expensive to produce, and people probably didn't like getting up you know, four times during the movie to, to switch discs. So a little bit later, they came out with constant linear velocity or extended play discs. Uh, you could get up to one uh, hour of video per track, I'm sorry, per side. Um, you could still do two-sided discs, which is how the, uh, the horse race game worked by having one hour, because they didn't have to, to, uh, to freeze frame or anything for that game. Um, so uh, one hour per side and uh, no freeze frame or slow-mo, you're, you're, you're trading uh, storage for those features. Uh, there was actually another uh, format, an offshoot of CLV. Read about it on Wikipedia. I'm not getting into it. It doesn't uh, affect us for, for this game. Tangent number three, let's make a video disc, shall we? Let's go back to 1985 and go, I'm going to make a video disc, right? Um, your uh, 1985 mastering costs are uh, at least about $2,000, maybe $1,500 if you go with the, with, with the uh, cheap thing. Um, going two sides, you're getting up to $2,500 or so. And your cost per disc, let's say you want to make 1,000 Pioneer discs using the CAV format, you're talking $15 a disc. This was not cheap. So I decided I wanted to revive Adventures <laughs> in Video Land, AKA Roller Coaster. Um, I, uh, I got a, a text from a guy saying, yeah, you're not at the retro computing uh, swap meet. Why aren't you here? And I was just like, I, I didn't know it was today. And I, I had nothing to do that Saturday, so I hustle out there. And uh, I see my buddy Marcus. Is Marcus here? Hey, Marcus. And uh, Marcus has a pile of Laserdisc players and stuff he's selling. And my mind just randomly, just the wrong electron went off. And I, I thought of this game. I'm like, huh, that's funny. And uh, and I'm walking around and I'm buying plotters and doing things. And then I see a guy who's selling laser discs. And I was like, fine, fine, I'll ask the guy. So I say, hey, do you have roller coaster? And he's like, I do, I don't have it with me today, but I can get it for you. And I decided to see if I could revive this game. So I needed a laser's player. I needed the Disco Vision version of roller coaster. It later was published in the, in the other format, but I, know, I knew that I would need to jump to, to has freeze frame and stuff. Need an unusual serial cable because I'm not going to do it the weird way uh, with the Aurora. First of all, I could not find an Aurora interface. Um, and uh, video disc players had gotten better. Uh, they now have serial, I mean modern, right? Uh, laser disc players have serial interfaces. So I figured maybe I can control it just using the Apple II's serial port. And indeed, uh, the, the Laserdisc player that I got does have one. It's an unusual uh, number of pins, not unstandard, so I, I had to buy an unusual serial cable. That wasn't too bad. And then, of course, finally, I need the basic code uh, in the Apple II. I thought that'll be easy. It'll be out there somewhere. And of course, there were scans of the magazine, which I think I did a decade ago, or several years ago, and there's scans of this book, which I know I did, uh, but nobody had this game, this game was not anywhere uh, available online. So I typed it, and 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 typed it. And I debugged it, and I put it on GitHub, so no one's ever going to have to do that again. Thank you. 
Um, but this version was meant to work with the Aurora interface, and I had to then next modify the program to work with a uh, modern serial interface, which I researched a lot, did a lot of reading, and I learned that the, 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 how easy it is to uh, access uh, the serial interface from AppleSoft Basic. Um, first, I learned that I have two Serpel serial, Super Serial cards, and neither of them seem to work properly. Uh, then I switched to the Apple IIc, because it has built-in serial, and I learned the whole thing about using uh, IN number two and PR number two to access the serial port. As far as I'm concerned, all lies. <laughs> all <laughs> lies. So just as I was about to get up, I found a, a give up. I found a, 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 a Usenet thread from God knows how long ago, and they were talking about how to access the serial port using poke, and I ended up bit banging the 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 the, chi the serial chip, and I got it to work. So I modified the game to work with a modern serial interface, and that is also available on the GitHub's. So yeah, I moved from this bad boy, the old uh, Pioneer, to this bad boy, which is the one that I bought from Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Because <laughs> it has the, there's our serial port on and back, like that. This is the list of uh, Pioneer players that uh, have that uh, feature. I believe I'm using the 4200 or the 2200, I don't know. So there is the URL for the GitHub. Um, I wanted to bring my LaserDisc player and demo this for you, um, and that didn't seem like a good idea. LaserDisc players are uh, old and they're fragile, and um, they're not terribly reliable. Um, LaserDisc have a lot of problems. Um, what doesn't have a lot of problems are DVDs. Did you know that Pioneer makes a DVD player that's serial controllable, what? What? that uses the exact same protocol as the LaserDisc player? I found that out. And so I got a Pioneer LaserDisc player. That's what I brought to Kansas Fest in my checked luggage. They also, and I've, I've not done anything with this, I also learned they have a Blu-ray player that is serial controllable and also uses the same protocol. Pioneer is awesome. <laughs> All right, so I need to change the, uh, the input to my Apple PC. Wait, give that a second to, to warm up. It doesn't get super bright. OK. So I'm going to show you the game roller coaster. Uh, two people probably have played this in the last 30 years. I tested it extensively. Carrington played it the other day. His playthrough will be on the Eaten by a Guru podcast. Uh, his, uh, his opinion of it will be on the podcast. Um, I also have made a YouTube video of my playthrough with the Laserdisc version. But we're going to see the DVD version. What is your first name, Gavin? You've just received an anonymous tip that a bomb has been planted on a roller coaster. You are called to investigate and fly off to stop the saboteur. On his side, he has the brilliance of an insane mind and an aid of allies who are determined to see that you fail. On your side, you have cunning, training, and dedication. You have infiltrated the park with the knowledge that the saboteur will strike sometime tonight. All you need to do is stop him. Okay. Now, let, uh, some of the benefits of DVD. First of all, we've got, we've got full screen, you know, high, higher def, way better video than we had on the LaserDisc. And also, now, we have access to the entire movie, not just the first 26 minutes. So this game could easily be expanded to, uh, to have more rooms and more things and, and you know, a, a way, way bigger game. Because basically, David had to work a game around just you know, a few thousand frames of, of, of video. Also, if you were so inclined, you, can, you can't burn your own laser disc today. Uh, at any price, but you can burn your own DVDs. 
what could you do with that? Uh, I threw out, I had some ideas. Um, you might uh, put uh, a bunch of uh, Apple commercials on, burn them all to DVD, and you might have a menu that lets you choose and watch different commercials from different eras. Or you might make a game. Did I tell you that these things, you can, you can link, you can have two and you can link them and control different things on different ones. So how about a game where you have people talking to each other? Uh, you can choose what phrase to say or, or, or something and, and you can have you know, two people talking or, uh, uh, I, I had the idea, it would be absolutely terrible, to have a software automatic Carrington. We could record him saying a thousand different words and then you could you know, have him, I don't know. <laughs> the possibilities are finite, for sure. Um, let's continue yes. this. Yes. All right. And it tells you, basically tells you how to, how to do a, a text adventure. It's, a, it's all, all two words. So press any key to begin. May luck be with you, Kevin. You're in the midway, which stretches to the east and west. A restaurant is to the north. This location contains nothing. Visible exits north, south, east, west. You can see we have a picture of the midway. Isn't that nice? Um, in, the, in David's original version, interesting, because uh, that player, through that interface, you could jump to a frame and you could play. You could also, uh, you would watch both the, vi the, both the, the video <laughs> and the screen uh, and the text on the same monitor. Uh, it, you, and you could choose when to go back and forth. I don't have that uh, capability uh, using the serial interface, but it would basically you know, switch back and forth on the same screen, kind of neat. Uh, but a feature that we can do uh, that that other interface couldn't do is that uh, uh, we can specify a starting frame and an ending frame and have exact frame-to-frame -frame reproducibility of exactly what I want shown. Uh, the, the old Aurora interface with the, the old Pioneer thing, basically he, did, he started from a frame, he had a four next loop to count an approximate amount of time, and then he would stop and switch back. And I think this is better to just be able to... Alright, so uh, we're going to go west. You're in the midway. An aid station is to the north. The sound of gunfire comes from a shooting gallery to the south. We can go to the shooting gallery. We don't have any money to, to play it. Yeah, there it is. You see the picture of the shooting gallery? Isn't that adorable? And then uh, go back to the midway. And um, this one, this room has a restaurant to the north. That sounds like fun. Let's go to the restaurant. You are in the restaurant. The room is crowded, but you see an empty table in the corner. This location contains nothing visible like the south. A waiter approaches and asks if you would like a seat. Since you are missed lunch today, you are hungry. Do you want to eat? Oh, yeah. You are served a delicious meal. Unfortunately, the service is rather slow. The bomb went off. Oops. The bomb went off and the bomber escaped. It is one year later. The roller coaster has been rebuilt. <laughs> the saboteur has decided to. Uh, Try to just uh, finds it destroyed again. Would you like to try to save it? No. Play that video again. So it combines still frames. It combines uh, movie uh, sequences, um, and uh, it is, without a doubt, the first uh, video game that included uh, 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 video, a laser video. And uh, are there any questions? Have you successfully saved the roller coaster? I have saved the roller coaster. Uh, Carrington has saved the roller coaster. Uh, it took him 45 minutes to do it. It's not a very long game. Like, like 10 a, years. <laughs> oh, and, and 10 <laughs> years. You know, <laughs> when it says uh, well, it's been a year later, the roller coaster has been rebuilt. It took him 45 minutes and 10 years. Ten roller coasters. Ten roller coasters. <laughs> We decided that maybe he was behind. He was actually bombing the roller coaster, or, or he was the roller coaster company that sells roller coasters, or something. He was benefiting from this one way or the other. Uh, this will be on display in just a few minutes at, during the, the vendor fair. I'm going to set it up somewhere and you, uh, with little smaller monitors, and you can uh, try it out if you want. The code for everything is on GitHub, and uh, I had a lot of fun doing this project. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>